Education is the key to a brighter future, yet the system faces serious challenges in South Africa and many schools are struggling. This limits the opportunities of young people and holds back the development of the nation. The bulk of South African uh, youth in uh, schools simply aren't getting an education that is good enough. Our issue is inequity and our issue is low performance that could be better, especially to young people from poorer communities. The South African education system is, uh, is largely uh, a very unequal one. We have issues like large class sizes, children being in classrooms of over 60. Many of our teachers uh, are not well equipped to teach uh, mathematics. Children can't read, children can't count, etc. Understanding these challenges is complex. In this video, we hear from some of those at the forefront of looking for solutions. I'm Sefas van der Berg. Uh, my area of work is in economics, but uh, whereas people always think that economics is largely about growth and macroeconomic things and the financial system, my interest is much more in uh, issues around poverty and inequality and how resources are divided in our society. My name is Carol Nuga. I, uh, until a few months ago, was a head of planning, strategy, uh, monitoring, evaluation and research in the Department of Basic Education in the National Department. My name is Nombumele Lomohotrane. I am a Deputy Director at the Department of Basic Education in the Research Monitoring and Evaluation section. Despite busy careers, Carol and Mpumi are pursuing their PhDs with Professor van der Berg as a supervisor, drawn by his unmatched expertise in the economics of education. I am at the University of Stellenbosch in the Department of Economics, but I uh, also uh, am part of a group called RECEP, Research on Socioeconomic Policy, uh, that uh, that group evolved around my uh, chair that I had with the National Research Foundation in the past 15 years as the South African Research Chair in the Economics of Social Policy. What exactly is social policy and how does it shape education? By social policy, um, I mean broadly uh, those things that relate to uh, education, uh, to health, uh, to things such as housing and uh, provision of infrastructure to households uh, and also broadly the labour market. So we see the uh, social, social policy relatively widely as encompassing all these things, although I must admit that within RECIP uh, we have focused particularly on on education, uh, where most of my own work has been in recent years. Education plays a crucial role in the fact that it uh, determines both uh, who gets uh, access to the labor market and what uh, wages they, uh, they uh, get within the labor market. Therefore, uh, our focus has been on education more than anything else. And that was also the way we expressed it uh, in the research proposal for the Saatchi chair. So what exactly needs fixing? What are some of the biggest obstacles to quality education in South Africa? In practice, we still have a, a very unequal education system with about 15% of the school uh, schools doing fairly well and 15% uh, of the learners also being in those schools. Uh, but the bulk of South African uh, youth in uh, schools simply aren't getting an education that is good enough. Uh, so for instance, if we compare South Africa's education system to that of neighboring countries, we are not performing as well even as uh, Eswatini or Swaziland as it used to be known. Uh, and we are very far behind a country such as Kenya in terms of our average results. We have, on average, uh, about 1.4 million children repeating every year. That is more than 10%, almost 12% of the total school population. Uh, and that is exceptionally high if one looks at that in international standards. None of the countries around us have, have uh, repeater rates of uh, this magnitude. When education fails, the repercussions are severe. Well, the consequence for learners is uh, is really that a large part of the po of the population are uh, almost from the beginning excluded from uh, many parts of uh, the economy 
uh, in their future. Education is crucial for getting a job and earning more. Professor van der Berg and his colleagues use statistical analysis to prove this and shape effective policy decisions. Data is, is, is central to, to what we do in our research. Uh, it is simply uh, a gap in the research that has been done in South African education. Very little data analysis has taken place in the past. We try to overcome this by uh, obtaining whatever data is available and analyzing that and trying to place it in the public domain in a way which is relatively user-friendly, in a way which uh, also speaks to the policy needs. In the economics of education, you're bringing econometrics tools to answer education questions. So seeing the economics perspective as a skill set and a tool set that you can then apply to different um, dimensions, I think not enough of that is happening in South Africa. To promote data-driven solutions, RISEP hosts the annual conference on quantitative education research. This event is essential for anyone seeking to make sense of the numbers. Interacting with policymakers has also always been important for us. Uh, we have an annual conference uh, where we invite uh, particularly policymakers, but also other stakeholders in education to look at quantitative education research. We have always focused a lot on trying to uh, improve capacity for data analysis within, uh, within government. Even the best research is useless if it can't be put into practice. Academics and policymakers need to find ways to communicate effectively and building these relationships takes effort from both sides. I'm Mary Metcalf. I've been, uh, I've been involved in education for nearly 50 years. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm a commissioner in the National Planning Commission and um, I'm leading the, the work on education. Servas's work is so valuable to the sector because what he brings to education analysis is rigor, strong evidence base, very carefully argued in a way that helps policymakers and those trying to understand education to get deeper insights. Good policymakers must always be looking at evidence. They must be examining their own assumptions. They must be looking for information, not only to support what they would like to hear, but information that helps a reconsideration of if policy is achieving its objectives. My name is Nick Spall. Um, I'm a senior program officer at the Gates Foundation uh, and I work on improving foundational literacy and numeracy uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. But before that and very recently I worked with Safas van der Berg at Stellenbosch University where I was an associate professor in the economics department. Safas has an incredibly unique uh, skill set or gifting in that he's able to walk the fine line between advising government and being asked to advise government, but also holding the line and speaking truth to power where it's necessary. The professor certainly doesn't mince his words. It's, it's difficult to be uh, too optimistic about the South African education system at this stage. We know, for instance, uh, from an international test that we've participated in, that more than 80% of South African learners in uh, grade four cannot read for meaning even in their home language, uh, which means that uh, it's only one in five South African children at that stage who hasn't fallen be far behind and uh, uh, for whom uh, the prospects going forward are still relatively good. But for 80% of children, it's a struggle and it has to do a lot with, uh, with the fact that we are not uh, dealing with that issue uh, early when it is necessary. His reputation for rigorous research and honesty makes Professor Van der Berg a sought-after expert. But it's not just his work that's important, it's the way that he does it. So he's always been respectful and kind, which sets him apart from maybe other researchers. Um, but there's also always been integrity and transparency in the manner that the research is done which makes it replicable and also not getting a sense from Sarfas that he's always looking for bad news, that he uh, is able to also identify good news and to share on that. There isn't a monopoly of good ideas or innovation that lies anywhere. Um, I found not in 
um, government, not in academia, not in the private sector or NGOs, and all of us bring a different perspective um, to the table. And so when we are collaborating towards similar purposes, that's incredibly instructive and powerful. By following an inclusive approach, Professor Van Aberg has laid a strong foundation for the future. In addition to the body of work that Servas has produced himself, he has also given the country an enormous gift of young researchers that he has brought into the work of RECEP, young people that he has supervised to PhD level who are now supervising others. This is an asset for the country, which I think is immeasurable. Excellent researchers in a community learning from each other and contributing and building the educational community more broadly. It's easy for me to say that Safas has been the most influential mentor in my life. I'm very grateful for his impact uh, and willingness to give of his time and his energy and to sort of when <laughs> a lot of us had a lot of sharp edges that needed to be knocked off and he sort of did that very graciously and sort of we call it the drip feed treatment that over time slowly he kind of nurtures uh, young researchers into being more senior and grown up researchers. So working with Sarfas as my supervisor has been fascinating. Um, he's been very generous uh, with his time um, and resources, um, which has been a big deal for me. He's always been a learner and he's always said to me, we're learning together, which has been great. Um, and he's been helping me protect space and time to write. And then in the pandemic um, was very responsive and caring. Addressing complex societal challenges requires sustained investment in research. However, state funding for universities has been shrinking due to fiscal pressures. In acknowledging the work of Savas, we also as a country need to acknowledge the contribution of the Saatchi Chairs. This has been an initiative of the National Research Foundation which I hope continues for many years. I think such a research group is one of the uh, things that we have too little of in South Africa. I think the funding constraints make it difficult in the way in which funding takes place. The Saatchi chair was useful for that, but even that has now been reduced. I think that that is a failure of our research system at the moment but in a country in which fiscal and financial resources are scarce, it's probably ine inevitable that we will uh, have to uh, juggle such, uh, such issues. Change is inevitable, but Professor Van Aberg has built a strong research group able to continue his important work. The uh, Saatchi Chair, the South African Research Chair Initiative of, of the NRF the, uh, that I held, uh, ended after 15 years. That's the maximum period that it, uh, that it lost. But broadly, we see RECEP uh, carrying on as it did in the past. Uh, my own role would uh, necessarily decrease in this, uh, in this regard, and some of my colleagues would take over more of the responsibilities. That has already naturally happened in the past few years, but I have little fear about that given uh, the strength of the people we've got involved. Sirfaas van der Berg and his colleagues and collaborators have created a model for how researchers and policymakers can work together, driving better outcomes for the people of South Africa. They deserve our support.